Welcome to On Cade. Today we're speaking with Torsten Valashek. Torsten is the Chief Executive Officer at Neopredics. Neopredics is a company that focuses on a lot of the data and a lot of the data that drives predictive analytics for newborn care. And so we'll be speaking to Torsten a lot about how really the utilization of that data and applying it in an effective way can make for more effective newborn care. Before we get into a deeper discussion about Neopredics, Torsten, tell us a little bit about you and your career. I'm, I'm happy to. So um, I was, as my name and my accent gives it away, I was born and raised in Germany. Um, but um, I spent a lot of time in the United States. Um, I, I started my career in the pharmaceutical industry. I uh, worked actually a little bit in, in Southeast Asia um, and then had a short stint in chemicals, um, worked in France. Um, but uh, only when I entered the medical device industry, I actually found my home and found my passion. Um, I used to work on behalf of Draeger Medical. Draeger is one of the largest European suppliers of medtech devices. And I was the president of uh, newborn neonatal care on behalf of Draeger. Um, and actually I worked in the United States um, uh, on behalf of Draeger. And that is when I found my passion and I made it my personal vision and mission um, to make sure that every baby has the best possible start into life. And ever since then, and that is now more than 20 years ago, um, I really dedicated my professional life towards that mission and um, pretty much only got engaged in, in, in jobs and projects um, that uh, are aligned to that. Um, so ever since then, I worked in medtech devices, uh, particularly in newborn care and neonatal care, worked for another uh, American-based company out of California called Natus. Um, I started my own company, a diagnostic-based uh, research company here in Germany, and um, started my own consultancy business, um, helping startup companies either from the United States getting started in Europe or vice versa, most of the time with a focus on newborn care. That's excellent. And Torsten, it's fascinating. I mean, several years ago, I worked on a UN project that looked at natal care around the world and the disparities in that care from all types of societies for all sorts of reasons. But I see that whilst we have come a long way, we still have a long way to go. And it certainly seems like your business, Neopredix, is helping move things forward. Tell us a little bit about what you're building there. So Neopredix is a startup company based out of Switzerland. We are a spin-off from the University of Basel in Switzerland. And um, what we are doing is we are um, developing intelligent algorithms that allow to predict the dynamic progression of certain disease parameters. Um, and uh, we are focused on the first thousand days of life. The first thousand days of life start with conception and go all the way all the way through the second birthday of, of, a, of, a, of a newborn. Um, so within that, we really focus on newborn care and maternal care because throughout pregnancy, obviously the fetus, the unborn life, uh, we also consider being part of these uh, 1,000 days of life journey. Um, and what we want to do is we want to help clinicians to identify patients today that will be in a critical um, situation tomorrow. And with that, enable clinicians to be proactive, because if we can help them to understand what happens tomorrow or in one week, they already today can act um, and, and help the patient, in our case, um, the, the pregnant women or the newborn baby um, to have better clinical outcome. That, that's what we are completely focused on. And you mentioned something that um, I've discussed many, many times for the last 20 years um, that I say newborns, maternal and newborn care, so pregnant women and newborns are the most underserved patient population in the world. Everybody's talking about, for example, in the United States, women of color, having a three times higher risk of, of uh, being in, in a preeclampsia situation. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it was just in the news two weeks ago in the United States um, and, and other minorities. Um, but in my mind, in my world, and I'm convinced this is a global situation, newborns are the most underserved population. 
around the globe? Well, certainly it's amazing that the data that you're able to pull together and offer can play a key role in fixing that. But tell me a little bit, I mean, you're obviously providing doctors and teams of doctors, hospitals, more information. Tell me a little bit more about what those customers are looking for right now. What are the key areas that they're focused on? There's a number of areas when it comes to newborn care, specifically many of the drugs. Now, we are not in the pharmaceutical business, but many of the drugs and the medical devices that are being used on newborns or neonates um, are derived from the adult, business, not adult business, but, but adult care. Mm -hmm. But what I learned, I have no medical background, but what I learned early on in my a professional life is that newborns are not small adults. Mm -hmm. Newborns deserve and need dedicated pharmaceuticals, dedicated devices, dedicated care that is tailored to the needs of newborns. Mm -hmm. um, so that is the number one priority in, in, in our part of, of, of uh, medicine uh, or, or life science that we are active in is to provide dedicated, in our case, dedicated data that is yeah. actually derived from newborns and that help clinicians, neonatologists, midwives, gynecologists, obstetricians um, to take dedicated care of these most fragile patients. Um, and when you ask about specific applications, um, there, there's a number, there's sepsis, early onset of sepsis, late onset of sepsis. Food allergies in newborns is a huge topic. Yeah. Um, when, when we can help to identify babies right after birth that have the risk of developing some type of food allergy into the future. Nutritionists actually can work with them in early life, but yeah. we need to help to find them. And then that's difficult because we don't know yet if they will have a peanut butter, peanut butter allergy. But think about the amazing effect of in one or two generations, we can avoid these allergies and our grandchildren can enjoy peanut butter and jelly sandwich again in school, because we might be able to help to completely avoid that situation. And that's what we're doing. As I mentioned earlier, helping clinicians to identify risk early on and prevent it from happening. You know, it's so funny. You're spot on. And it's been a while since I've had my own children were infants, were newborns. But I remember my experience with the whole process was that there were volumes of information available to parents up until the time the child was born. And then, <laughs> then it was kind of like, okay, you're on your own, figure it out. <laughs> and there was obviously a little bit of information, I'm exaggerating, but certainly it was less so. You know, it was a lot more focused on the maternal experience of giving birth. And so I think you're spot on. I've also been looking at the allergy space closely because one of my children suffers with quite a severe peanut allergy. And it's true, you know, the younger we're able to identify these things, the more likely you're able to come up with ways to, if not cure, you know, certainly reduce the impact uh, quite dramatically. Uh, absolutely. And that's exactly what at Neopredix and of course, there's other companies um, that what we're trying to do, because the earlier we can detect something, and that is also true for adult life. I mean, if you or I or anybody develops something, whether it's in the oncology space or wherever, the earlier detected, the better the outcome. But for newborns, uh, it really has a dramatic change and impact on their life, because hopefully you and I and many other, our I assume similar age group have many decades ahead of them, but mm -hmm. newborns have 80, maybe 90, maybe one day, hundred years ahead of them. Yeah. So helping them to have the best possible start into life and to live a healthy life and productive, whatever that means, doesn't have to be in a financial materialistic way, but a fulfilled life, they can contribute to society for the next 80, 90, a hundred years. Yeah. So the impact that, the medical device industry, the pharmaceutical industry, healthcare, I want to talk about the industry only, healthcare can have on newborns is, is unbelievable. And it's a, a still untapped potential. Um, so that's, great. that's why I'm so passionate about it. And sometimes it's small things. There's something called neonatal jaundice when the skin turns yellow, which is actually our first product, which is already on the market. We can help to um, identify newborns 
that should not be discharged early or too early because they will need to be readmitted. And that right. costs the American healthcare system hundreds of millions of dollars, just the readmissions, because it's a bureaucratic um, um, expense that happens. We can help to um, help clinicians to identify those children that shouldn't be discharged, because That's they will right. come back within 24 hours, because we can predict the progression of the biomarker that is behind neonatal jaundice. So sometimes it's small things that really make a difference when you look at a particular life. That's amazing. I mean, as someone who was born with jaundice, I imagine probably that would have been quite critical if it had been diagnosed incorrectly for me. So I can see the value for sure of all of these types of new products. But let me shift gears a little bit, Torsten, and I think it's already come out quite a bit in the interview. I can see, I can feel, I should say, your passion for this area. But tell me a little bit more about that. I mean, why is it this area that has really sparked your imagination and really driven so many solutions that you've launched in the market? That's a very good question. And it took me many, many years to, to find out where, where my passion is and what makes me get up in the morning and what keeps me going. And I, I can only say I love babies. Um, I, I, I always did. Uh, as, a, as, a, as a young man, I, I, I couldn't wait to have my own children and took longer than planned, but it's a different story. Um, but I, I just, I, I, I love babies. I, I enjoy being around children and I truly believe children are our future. Um, one day uh, they, they, they will take over because we get old, we pass away and our children will take over in, in business and in politics and in, in any part of society. So I think they deserve the right to get the best care, the best start. And moreover, they are innocent in the true meaning of being innocent. You and I and, and our friends and families, we did things in our life to our bodies, we, whatever we did, it doesn't matter. But, but we are responsible for who we are and what we do and the situation we are in. Um, but newborns, they are not responsible for the situation they are born into, whether they are born into a, a war, into religious difficult situations, in whatever it is. They are completely innocent. And that is, I think, what really drives my passion, because they are not responsible for the mess they are in. Yeah. And and the more I feel they deserve that as mankind, we we help them to have the opportunity to get out of the mess, mess they're in there, if they're in a, some type of mess. And the best way to, you know, live a fulfilled life is to start have a, a healthy start. Yeah. And, and that is really what makes me so passionate about it. And who knows, maybe... Um, there is the next Albert Einstein or whoever who finds the, the formula for world peace. And, and I really think that big because, as I said, children are our future. And I want to make sure, and even I'm well aware of the fact I'm just a little tiny piece of that whole machinery um, to make sure that they have the best possible start into life. That makes that's, me going. That's great. Well, I mean, clearly the space that you're operating in is evolving quickly. I've seen certainly areas of analytics is strengthening through companies like yours, but also certain forms of care have been dramatically improving. Even the focus on diet, it seems to be getting more of a focus. Tell me a little bit about how you see the near future and the kind of the key topics that are going to be on the near horizon. Well, I mean, there's a lot of talk recently over the last few months about artificial intelligence, the good, the bad, um, and the impact, the impact on, on society, on workforce, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think, I mean, and it's good that we talk about it, but it's not that new. It's just that media just identified that as a hot topic. And, and I think I don't like to talk about artificial intelligence. Um, I, I rather say algorithms, intelligent algorithms, smart algorithms have been around us for a number of years. I mean, an autopilot in, a, in an airplane is, is an algorithm, right? The ABS system in the car you drive probably. Um, so it's been around, but now it becomes very obvious. Mm -hmm. And, and, and um, I think now that with, yeah, everybody talks about ChatGPT, I do too. 
that that we as laymen now have access to these systems and to the benefits and, and also to the the risks of it uh, makes it so um, um, dominant in in the media and in the news at the uh, at the moment. I think what is more important, yes, we need to be aware of the risk, uh, but we shouldn't be scared. Um, I think every major innovation, every disruptive innovation, brings risk with it. Um, when when new car when cars have been developed and innovated people were scared of speed right and now right. we don't think about it anymore right. so that's why i say let let's let's embrace it let's make sure that we that we can steer it and that there are boundaries and so i like that part of the discussion um but let's make the best out of it and let's mm -hmm. see the benefit and uh, many years ago actually when i was still was in the pharmaceutical industry and it was way before internet and algorithms and and AI, um, somebody told me, well, there's, there's data, which is oftentimes useless. And then you need people today, we need computers to make to turn data into into, into information. So that's the first step. But then, and I think that's crucial, we need to take this information and turn it into knowledge. And only once it becomes knowledge, we can actually use it. Yeah. And I think that's in the, the business environment we are talking about right now, that's the biggest step that we need to make now is to turn all the data into information and make the information digestible. So yeah. it becomes knowledge. In my case, towards clinicians, in many other cases, to, to other ex groups of experts, but in the end to mankind, so we can actually use the data because just having data is useless. And I think we are all think about smartphones and the daily news and, and social media, we all are overwhelmed with data and information. You know, I think finding a way to, to pull information that then translates into true insight, and can make a difference is where Neopredix is playing and helping and pushing things forward. Torsten, if someone wanted to learn more about what you and your team are working on, where's the best place to reach you? Well, the best place, obviously, is our website, uh, www.neopredix.com, um, or my LinkedIn uh, profile um, obviously also leads to Neopredix. Um, I suggest that's the best way. And um, through social media, I'm, I think I'm easy to find, easy to reach. I'm happy to discuss that. And I can only encourage everybody to not only think obviously about new predicts because we are very dedicated focused business, but as we just discussed, make sure that knowledge is being spread and used to the benefit of, of humans. Well, Torsten, amazing conversation. We've been speaking with Torsten Valashek. He is the Chief Executive Officer at Neopredex. Torsten, thank you so much for being on Uncage today, and we look forward to having you back. Thank you for having me. Cheers. Cheers.